Greetings! I'm Stashlin. This is the first episode of the multi-part series as a comprehensive and more personalized guide to building. This is not just any other building guide or series, I promise you. This series aims to help you work through the mental processes and thoughts and feelings you may have while building and to help you understand what you're looking at. Firstly, I want to establish there are two types of building, survival and creative. For the sake of this series, when I say creative, I mean creative within, in the sense of the use of world edit or other mods for commands. Otherwise, it would be the same thing as survival, you just don't have to get the resources manually. These two types of building are actually very, very different. Much of creative building, that being used in commands, allows for the use of unobtainable blocks or block states that cannot be achieved in survival Minecraft. The use of items like stems of drift leaves, like this image from the Minecraft server Terra 1912. I will mostly talk on survival building in this series, as most of my creative building is simply just designing the builds A that you see here, but to make sch into schematics that I will then use for hardcore worlds. Let me stop you right there, other me. I sell most, if not all, of the schematics I make on Patreon. Shameless plug. Before we do fully get into this video, liking and subscribing is the fastest and easiest way to support me. However, making a purchase or subscribing on Patreon goes directly to me and is greatly, greatly appreciated. I also stream on Twitch. It's where I do a most of my, it's where I create most of my content, but I'm now working on uploading to YouTube now. All the links to these things will be in the description. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Thanks other me. Now where was I? Oh yeah, using creative for things. Moving swiftly on. Building itself is multifaceted and has a ton, a ton of subject matter to cover. So I'm going to attempt to break down topics into easy to digest segments about individual subjects in the grand scheme of building. At the end of this episode, I want to leave you with just a quick couple things. The basic tenets of building and opening the door to understanding what your brain is telling you while you're building, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. There are three basic tenets when it comes to building. Your audience, seeing what you see, committing to a decision in your build, and understanding the rules so that you can break them. Starting from the top, your audience needs to see what you see, because otherwise the build will be lost on them. They're not going to understand or get the same feeling from your build that you get if they can't see what you're seeing. Now, some of that is not changeable. Imparting, imparting specific emotion is difficult. Impar imparting basic overall emotion, like if you're building a vampire's castle, you can impart fear from a build. You can give that vibe to people, but you can't impart a very specific feeling. But your audience needs to see what you see. I myself use extensive texture packs and shaders at times to change how the game looks and gives myself some more options to take nice pictures of builds, to make things look nice in the game, etc. I don't have, in my personal texture packs, I don't have polished gradations of stones, instead they're retextured to look like bricks. If you only play on single player, this is almost negligible, it's the only people who will see the builds that you've made are seeing through your own metaphorical eyes because they can only see it through the pictures which in which any texture pack you have is automatically applied. However, if you're building on a server or a realm, other people will almost certainly not have the same texture packs as you do. Something that might look amazing, absolutely gobsmacking to you, may look not so good or just terrible to another person if they can't see what you're seeing. If you have a texture pack that completely changes the way the game looks, of which there are numerous amounts, Anything that you build is going to be completely lost on people. If you're attempting to impart emotion onto the viewers of the build, it's going to be very, very difficult. People will not be seeing what you're seeing. Now, some examples of texture changes that I described, such as changing polished variants to bricks, it's not a big difference whatsoever. Some texture packs, of course, do change the entirety of Minecraft and how it looks. For example, texture packs that Hypixel uses to make their games, you know, look right. They're taking items like potatoes and retexturing them to be a magical staff or a paintball gun, whatever it is that you get mini game you're playing. That's a, it's unimportant in the mini game, but it, the fact that they are completely changing the way the game looks. In fact, if I go and pull up, say, this texture pack here, things look very, very different now. Everything has a bit of a darker vignette. Things don't look quite right like they did. You'll notice those planks look weird. There's a number of reasons for that. You can notice that castle over there, what was once all white is now this weird mix of grays and whites, and now that roof that was black is now this is now the traditional nether brick red. These are all examples of how changes in textures can change the feelings of the builds in part. Now, what I was trying to impart with that castle is kind of gone. I wanted this big towering behemoth of a building in this beautiful adorned white 
that is now completely lost on the viewer as it looks weird and it's all fractured and dirty and kind of eh, right? It's just one example as of course as you see I've got a lot of different texture packs available to me that I use. If only some people can see the textures that you've used it's gonna be kind of a problem. Some people can't really see what you're trying to build, what you're trying to impart on people. This tenant is of course however only really meant for people that do share their builds. If all, if you just play single player and you're content playing by yourself and you don't really show off anything to anybody, who cares if they if other people aren't really seeing what you see? It's your own personal private world. Nobody else is going to be on it. No one else is really going to see it. Does it really matter? Not particularly. But deciding how to change what you are what you're seeing in the game and how you want to enjoy the game, it's entirely up to you. These are important, however, for the enjoyment of a game that is just building simulator. You know, Minecraft is based on being able to build whatever it is that you want to build, whether it be a big ol' mushroom, or a baby zombie statue, or islands, and uh, floating islands with buildings on them being taken over by nature. Whatever it is that you want to build. That's what Minecraft's here for. That's why you play it. Building is full of decisions that you're going to have to make. I.e. what colors to use, how to texture your builds, what you want to put in your builds, what you want to put around your builds, all that and more, what architecture styles you want to use. And it can be very, very difficult to choose what it is that you want to do in your build, but you are going to eventually have to just come to a decision. This, of course, will get easier as you get more practice at building. Don't worry. Just like anything else, getting started is the most difficult part. Don't get discouraged, please. It just takes time. Practice. And remember that failing is a natural part of learning and becoming better. Now, when it comes to learning how to make decisions quickly that will positively affect the builds that you make, it's going to be very, very difficult for me to just teach that to you. It comes through a lot of experience, and there's a lot of knowledge there that is difficult to impart in a 10 to 15 minute video. So much of learning how to make the decisions is based on practice and having an understanding of building. Some choices aren't gonna be easy to make. Having a yellow floor with pink walls and a blue roof is probably not going to look too good and your eyes might be bleeding when you look at it. However, there's going to be a lot of difficult choices as well as to how and where to add texture. Where to put, perhaps, do you want to put in pillars for something, create a promenade? Whatever it is that you want to change or add to your build could be a very easy decision to make or a difficult decision to make. It depends on what you're trying to decide. Of course, a lot of that does come from practice and making mistakes and realizing that practice and making mistakes is going to make you better. And so, I mean, I've been playing this game for, for a decade, if not more. I have a ton of experience playing the game, and so some of these decisions come to me pretty easily. But even then, with this build that I'm working on, I'm kind of stumped right now. I'm not exactly sure where I want to go, what I want to do, and where I want to take this. Will I figure it out? Yeah. But it's going to take me some time because I don't know exactly what it is that I want to do. So not every decision you make is going to be amazing. And this is also part of why creative building looks better than normal building. Firstly, they can build at a much, much higher scale. And when it comes to just sheer size, the human eye kind of thinks, ooh, that looks good. It's just the way the human eye works. It's the way our brains work. We see a big thing and like, ooh, big thing. I like big thing. But it, they can also make mistakes much, much faster and learn from those mistakes faster and fix and change those mistakes faster than anyone in survival can who has to go build, take a step back, build again, take a step back, build again, take a step back, like you might have to with that zombie statue. That took me a while and I'm still not happy with it. But that's just the way building works sometimes. Truly, this is what building is and what so, so many other skills are. It's just making mistakes until you find what it is that you like or figure out how to do what it is that you're doing better. Now lastly, understand the rules so that you can break them. This comes in the form of breaking the rules of styles of architecture, combining unusual blocks together to create contrast. Just be creative with how you want to do it. Before you do this, however, understand the basics. If you're building a house, you have to have the foundation before you put in the floor, the floor before you put in the walls, and the walls before you put in the roof. If you try and put in the roof first, it's not a house that's just a roof on the ground, but I mean, I suppose you could try and live under it. It's just not going to be a very fulfilling life. So you have to understand the basics first before you can get to the advanced, of course. So start with the foundations, then the floors, then the walls, and then the roof. As you see over there, a lot of roofs. That was the last thing I added. Some rules are not meant to be broken, i.e. you can't, I mean, you could just have a roof on the floor, but you probably shouldn't. 
and you should have walls as well, generally, I suppose. Maybe if you're just building like a tent or something, or like a pavilion that you put it, you know, like a pavilion on poles, perhaps you don't really need to worry about walls, but again, some rules are just, you shouldn't be broken. Keeping things from hurting your eyes is important. However, most rules can still be bent and changed. Building does not have truly have very many strict rules to it. Your personal building style might, and sometimes it's best to change that up. Try different methods of building, mess around with different processes in creating your builds. However, make sure you understand and know the basics completely and have them mastered before going to mess around with more advanced ideas and styles. Once you've mastered the basics, go to the advanced and turn those original basics into muscle memory so that you can turn your advanced into your basics and keep that pattern going. Now, when it comes to trying to explain what you're thinking, it can be difficult. I don't live inside your head yet. However, I can at least have a small look into your brain simply based on how long I've been doing this. I know what some of you will be thinking. When it comes to learning to build, you will, be get, you will get overwhelmed. It's gonna happen. So start small and build up. Always, always start small, no matter what it is that you're doing. The feeling of where do I go from here is perfectly, perfectly normal, I promise you. So when that comes, step back and observe the whole build or project that you're working on. Just stop, breathe, and think. And generally, if you give yourself that time to look, stop, go back, and look at the whole build, you'll figure out where you want to go from there. Usually you will. However, sometimes you might be completely, completely stumped, and you have no idea where to go. Go ask somebody else what they think of your build. Send them a couple pictures. Or go and talk with a friend, say, hey, what do you think of this? Where can I add? What can I change? They might give you just one idea, but that one idea could be the nail on the wall that goes, changes your wall from being a piece of junk to, well, now you've built a Mona Lisa, I don't know, whatever it is. Sometimes other people have a magical ability to look what you're seeing and get something completely, completely different from it. That goes for all walks of life, by the way, all of them, whatever it is that you're doing. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter your skill level in building or whatever it is that you're doing. Of course, as I said, it could be, it goes for all walks of life. You could be drilling oil, but, or you could be washing floors for a living. I don't know what it is that you do, but just one idea they can give you can and most likely will lift your build to the next level, so long as you do it at your traditional standard of building. Now, unfortunately, that's all I have time to give you today. Make sure to leave a comment as to what you want to see in another, the next episode on. I may already have one planned for that topic, so if I see a lot of people asking for the same thing, that's what I'll upload next. Remember to be smart, be safe, and don't die so you hear the next time I upload. Bye!